I need a catchy intro here. Turkey bacon. Hello, everyone, and welcome <laughs> to Save It for the Cast. My name is Aaron, and I am joined by a fully stocked cast here today. Uh, we've got Jesse over here in the international aisle. Very good. What's up? We've got Billy over here in the spice aisle. Hey, now. And we've got Eric over here in the meat aisle. Oh, oh, that uh, sounded super far away. Give me another. <laughs> Already oh, with this bullshit. He's got his head in the meat not, floor, dude. Not like this. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. It's just, it's just the worst. And we've got Eric over here in the meat aisle. Hey, oh. All right. That was, that was better. Uh, also, I've been told that the meat aisle and the beer aisle are adjacent. Um, I don't know. I don't know why that came up on the cast, but that's okay. <laughs> well, they figure if you have gout, you know, it's, a, it's kind of like a two-stop shop kind of deal. Definitely. Uh, okay. Is that is beer and meat good for gout? I have no idea what no, the it's, reference it's is No, it's bad there. for gout. That's how you get oh. gout. <laughs> oh, so this is the gout unfriendly aisle. Yeah. I got yeah, it. This is after they've taken your foot. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but that just worked out uh, amazingly. So, welcome to the next episode of Save It for the Cast here. I've lost count. I don't know. This is episode seven, I believe. Uh, official episode seven? I don't know. But yeah, so today, uh, as you could probably all tell, we have a new voice on the cast today. We have our good buddy Jesse over here coming in, uh, coming in hot on the yep. podcast. Coming in hot. <laughs> That's my nickname in college. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> um, so what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll get him introduced because obviously everybody should know who Eric and Billy are over here. Yeah, uh, yeah. They've been on the vast majority of episodes. So um, we'll just get Jesse introduced. So I want to say and correct me if I'm wrong, Jesse, if you if you remember this, you and I obviously first met through Bill. Yep. But I want to say we met. It had to have been back in 2011 with Modern Warfare 3. Uh, yeah, if you throw dates at me, I'm not going to know. Um, okay. But <laughs> Modern Warfare 3 sounds about right. That sounds about right, yeah. Because I don't, I don't even remember the context, which um, was like, I don't know how you and, and Billy knew each other, but I don't know like if we just started gaming together because we used to do like game battles and Family Guy quote sessions. and Yeah, uh, it was weird because like Bill and I had our own like tangential relationship. Yeah. Completely like independent of what you knew Bill from. Mm -hmm. probably met you in 2007 ish yeah, sure. eight forever ago uh, in the music yeah. scene um I, I was playing video games completely independent of that and then you know just from knowing bill we ended up playing cod together mm -hmm. and then that's how we ended up on c town and you making me laugh my ass off a couple times oh. <laughs> I th i'm pretty sure that was the map that i met you was c town because for some reason i have you tied to that c weevil <laughs> Yorgi Smorgi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I but uh I knew we met through Call of Duty, obviously. Yes. And we've played video games multiple times over the years. And you've been in uh, a lot of different videos. You've been in the Fibbage videos, you've been in the Among Us videos where I killed you a bunch and you yep, hated me. I, I got spit roasted that time. <laughs> I did not do well. <laughs> well, I think if I actually go back to our text conversation, um, and I scroll up to the top here. Oh, this uh, I see the first message you sent me was, I don't know how you got away <laughs> so fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. It, it was just a multiple time where like every time I was the killer, which was only a handful of times, I just found you in a dark yeah. corner. Yeah, and like a Wes Craven movie, I ended up is as a bloody smear on the walls before I even knew <laughs> what was happening. Every time I came across you, which was even better because I closed the door on you one time and I went down yep. and I'm just like, oh, no, Jesse, as I'm hitting the button to kill you. I got so pissed off because like I at that point was playing it on my work laptop and uh, I didn't have a pedal then. So for me to mute my mic, I kept having to like reach up and like actually hit the button. Mm -hmm. Plus, I was confused about the controls. Yeah, it was and so difficult. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that was but, like. I was confused by like here. he's up here talking about his pedal and stuff like yeah okay well now you know I just kind of hit it but like I didn't understand the controls I didn't understand how to click and do things and I kept getting voted out too you fucking <laughs> to be fair dwellers to be fair 
there was one round i forget who was the killer with me but the second we all spawned in and we could talk again you were just like aaron <laughs> filthy rat, fucking dude. Rat. <laughs> i think aaron ended up as the the killer the imposter more than anyone else yeah. because every time i got anywhere within <laughs> eye shot of him i was like aaron's gonna fucking kill me again. and then like the next fucking second i'm dead and then when i was the killer I swear to God, there was nobody for miles, and then I finally kill somebody, and like the whole room was like flooded with people. There was a situation <laughs> that I had a double kill with somebody. Uh, was it Chris or was it you? No, it was it was Chris and I were the good guys, and you and Shrew were the bad Shrew. guys, and yeah, Shrew yeah, yeah. killed Chris. And I went, oh, I'm like, sure did it, sure did it. And Joey's <laughs> like, I don't know if we could trust Enigma. And I'm like, what do you mean? I yeah. saw the kill happen. Vote him out, no cap, vote him out. <laughs> yep. Joey had it out for me that day, I think. That was that was really funny though. Yeah. But uh but yeah, so segueing off from the uh the introduction here. Um first off, welcome everyone and uh glad to have you aboard Jesse for your first episode. We'll uh we'll bring you in smooth. We'll bring you in smooth. I like a rough landing. All right. As rough as can be. <laughs> <laughs> so, today's episode is going to be very different compared to the other stuff that people have heard up to this point. Um, I know for a fact, obviously, Jesse hasn't heard this. Bill, I don't even know if you've heard this story. This is going to be... I don't think I have either. I've heard yeah. you reference it before, but I've never heard you tell the actual full story. And, of course, we've got our uh, our good boy Eric over here on the other line, who not only has heard the story, he's lived it. He and I were there, <laughs> and this was a wild night. I was a part of it. But this is a, a local urban legend of sorts, so uh, I'll tell it as such. We'll We'll turn down the lights... We'll get a nice spooky vibe going, maybe add in a couple thunder claps and lightning strikes and all sorts of stuff. Sure, yeah. And we'll, we'll, t we'll tell it by candlelight. That's what I'll do. Um, so tune into the YouTube version of the podcast to get a candle burning on screen or something. I don't know. <laughs> but this is the legend of Turkin. Now, I don't know if that name will be censored or not. Um, I'm going to have to look up and see how easy it is to find this urban legend. But uh, But at the very least... So you guys know who it is. The gentleman's name was Turkin. So there was this legend, and Eric, feel free to jump in and fill in some of the blanks if I get some of this wrong or, or if you have like another perspective on it. But there was this urban legend around where you and I grew up, um, probably within, I would say, 20 to 30 minutes of where we lived. And there was this legend of this guy who would walk up and down this road in the middle of the night. <laughs> and seemingly there was a reason, but everybody had a different reason for like why he was walking these roads. The one that I heard was because it was a father who was walking up and down the road with a baseball bat, binoculars, and a gun because he was looking for a driver that killed his daughter outside of their house on the hill one fateful night mm. and this man would just patrol this road all hours of the the night any day of the year like you could just pick a day or a night and go onto this road and see this man walking up and down this road that was the legend i heard um what did was there anything else that you heard about it eric uh no, honestly, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I don't think I had even heard of it beforehand. And then you guys were just like, yeah, so this guy does this and let's go check it out. And I was like, hell yeah. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. And I mean, it's just, uh, you know, just a potentially dangerous man walking up and down a road with weapons and, you know, binoculars and stuff. And he could spot a license plate probably from a quarter mile away. But uh, but yeah, you know, we, just, <laughs> we decided we put on our little uh, Sherlock Holmes caps for the night and we were like, let's go. Let's go check out this uh, this scene. Now, to set the tale, it all started on a night where a group of friends were going to play some laser tag. <laughs> and we drove up to um and there was a very famous uh laser tag spot up there called and now the place is closed down um no longer there but we used to go laser tagging every single weekend practically and on this night interestingly enough i'm pretty sure there was five of us that went up there i think it was 
Eric, it was you, me, Chris, Vinny, and Aaron was with us, but he didn't go with us to Turkin. For whatever reason, we needed yeah. to drop him off back home. And we did that. And I remember, like, while we were going out laser tagging and stuff, the weather was supposed to be getting worse. So, like, my mom was like, oh, be careful. Like, it's going to start snowing and we don't want you to get caught out. This is Debbie's actual audio, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it was I recorded it and I've saved it for all these years later. That's amazing. Um, normally, I'm good at impressions, but I, I guess I can't read my mom's <laughs> voice that well. Uh, but anyway, we so we drove home. We, we got Aaron back home. Uh, other Aaron, not me, Aaron. And then we decided that we were going to go and take a ride and see if we could spot the legend, the myth, the mystical beast himself, Turkin. And the drive was in the total opposite direction of our laser tag adventure. So like we came from one direction, had to drive back home, had to go completely a different direction and make it there. And the name of the road was called uh, is it's still the same name. Uh, the name of the road is. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. And in order to get on this road, you have to drive across some train tracks. And then once you hit the other side of the tracks, it goes so steep uphill. Uh -oh. Interesting. It is not a flat dead end cul-de-sac road as you would expect to see in a cartoon a la like Ed, Ed and Eddie or something no, like that. It's like a cartoon a la SpongeBob when they're in uh, the deep. Yeah. The <laughs> rock bottom. <laughs> yeah. Rock bottom. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> and I mean, it wasn't like so dark that we couldn't see, but it was pretty dark. Like you would come to say it was advanced darkness. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't just sure. <laughs> <laughs> So I, it's it's also important to point out that I was the one who drove us over to laser tag in my dad's Hummer, which has also made a uh, guest appearance on the podcast. Right. Um, that'll be in, in the episode with my mom. Uh, but on the way to Turkin, we made a driver change because I didn't want some crazy man with a baseball bat and a gun to beat up and shoot on my dad's Hummer. Sure. Which makes sense. Yeah, so we decided to take Chris's car, and Chris at the time had this beat-up red Ford Focus. And mm. when I say beat-up, it wasn't like a, a beat-em-up car, like where it was just like trash or whatever. Like, it was old. It had some miles on it. The right front, when he used to take right turns pretty sharply, would grind, and I was always concerned because I always sat in the passenger seat. So I'm like, you're not worried about this, but I am, Chris, because right. this, this is... could be the end. This is me on the line here. But the way that it worked is Chris was driving, Vinny was in the front passenger seat, Eric was in the back left uh, back seat, and I was in the back right back seat. And we start going up this hill, and Chris starts taking it real nice and easy because we don't know what to expect. We don't know whether this gentleman is just going to come out and like start beating the shit out of the car, if he's going to be in front of us, behind us, whatever. So we, and, and I should also point out, Nobody in this car had ever gone up or down this hill. <laughs> it's the first time for everything. Other than Chris. Chris had met this gentleman once before, and we'll get to that story maybe another time, or we'll, we'll talk about it in a compendium episode, or we'll talk about it later on afterwards. But it isn't as important to the story as, as the current events that are going on. So we're driving up and down, and Chris is like, oh, don't worry, he's here. Because at first, we were like, are we going to see him? Like, is this guy out and about tonight? It was, it was really cold. It started to snow. Like, there were a little bit of flurries in the air. Like, the, the mood was set. And oh yeah, I was just waiting for a wild turkin to appear out of the forest or a driveway or some type of home. I don't know. Right. So we kind of, we're, we're slowly going up this hill, and we're looking left, we're looking right, we're looking in front of us and we're looking behind us. And all of a sudden, out of the corner of our eye, we see someone standing on the side of the road. And this man had a pair of binoculars around his neck. He did not have a baseball bat. However, which is good at the time. <laughs> he had like he was dressed appropriately, like he was dressed. <laughs> yeah it was a weird offshoot like this is the international day for I him. didn't expect this to be flat and we end up 
driving past him and he's he's dressed in normal uh, enough attire for being outside at like one or two in the morning uh, on a wintry night. He's, he had a jacket on. He had like jeans on or whatever. But this guy, all of a sudden, he just stares at us as we're driving past him and we're like, oh, my, oh, my God. Oh my God, is that him? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Like, it's a person. Like, we didn't expect to see anyone. And here is a guy standing outside. And Eric and I, quick, we turn around and we're looking behind us. And as if he's a shadow in the night, a shadow just goes running from right to left <laughs> since we've now passed him behind I the car. That. And Eric and I are like, oh, guys, he's running. <laughs> he's running. <laughs> and we didn't know if he was chasing us. We didn't know if he was looking for refuge. We didn't know what to expect. We were just blown away that right. he was here. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't care if there's an urban legend or not. If I'm driving at night, I don't want to see any motherfucking buddy on the side of the road walking. It <laughs> could be anybody. Like that. Exactly. That dude looked like he was about ready to bow up on you. Yeah. Face. Like, I'm cool. Just let me be. <laughs> Now, uh, we could also, I guess, describe the guy. Um, I don't really remember too many, too many distinguishing features. The best way I could describe him was he was an extremely tall, slightly balding or bald man. Oh. And I would say, I mean, it's not important, it but it Dennis just describes Reynolds. the appearance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Dennis <laughs> Reynolds was out here. The implication. Did you finish shit? <laughs> but, uh... I would say he was a little bit huskier. Like he was, he was not like built like a bodybuilder, but he was just like a little bit heavier, but he, he didn't, he wasn't like fat. Like he filled in his size. Well, he was a thick boy. Yeah. He was slightly heavier bodybuilder. He was very tall and built. And, uh, you know, so just picture like seeing a giant shadow run across the back end of the car behind you as Eric and I are peering out through this back window you know, through the snowflakes coming down, we just see the shadow dart across uh, the road. Like, it was terrifying. It was unbelievably scary. So from my notes, I have that you have described either Chris Pratt or a Navy SEAL. <laughs> a mix of the two <laughs> would be more appropriate. All right. I would say this was like a backwoods Chris Pratt or like <laughs> a, a low-budget Navy SEAL. <laughs> like, a, like a Kentucky Chris Pratt. Yeah. 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 Okay, got it. I'm, I'm, I'm on to it now. Now we drive up the road and I should also point out that as you go up this road, like it's very small, like it's not, it's wide and it's just barely wide enough for two cars. But at the same time, there's really steep ditches on either side. Like I said, it started to snow and we just don't know where we are or where we can turn off or whatever. So we, we drive up the road about, I would say, probably a quarter mile, maybe maybe somewhere between a quarter mile and a half mile. And we do like a three point turn and we wanted to get far enough away. So that way we didn't we weren't that close if we were turning around and this guy would just come up to our <laughs> doors and be like, let me in, let me in. you know, like Eric Andre. Eric Andre. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> let me in. And. We just we wanted to avoid that. We wanted to keep as much distance between us as possible. So we do like a little Chris does a three point turn and we start driving back down the hill. And I don't know if you know this, but driving down a very steep hill in a wintry storm is a little bit scary on its own. Absolutely. It's even scarier when you have an insane man potentially running around outside in the darkness. Yeah, a proverbial axe murderer. And driving a rickety Ford Focus. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so as if we weren't driving slow enough going uphill, we drove even slower going downhill <laughs> and we drove down. This is, I, I guess, you know, it's still the first time up and down the hill, but I would say this, we'll, we'll call this the second pass. And the second pass uh, was very uneventful. We got down to where we saw him uh, the first time and we were like, really really slow and easy on the gas and chris was dragging the brakes and we're looking around and we don't see this gentleman anywhere and then finally out of the darkness i see a shadow run up a driveway as fast as you can picture somebody <laughs> running hurdles or sprints on a track just going you know kicking it into overdrive 
And this man just took off running up this driveway. And I said, there he is. The shadow. <laughs> He's there. And it, it was on Eric's side. But I don't know. Did you do you remember seeing him, Eric? No, just because our our heads were on swivels the whole time. Like I was looking one way, you were looking another. So yeah, like yeah you situation. got him that time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, exactly. I just happened to spot the shadow that time. So we go down the hill and we go all the way down to the bottom and we turn around just near the train tracks because it's the flattest part of this road. Sure. It, it's the safest because it's, you know, you wouldn't think train tracks would be safe, but it's the furthest away from this madman running around on this hill. Mm. And we finally, we start our third trip up this hill, the third, or you know, the second ascent, third trip, if you will. And we are just like unbelievably on edge. We just could not believe how crazy like this was like out of all the events. I, th I don't even remember what night of the week it was. It was probably a Friday if I had to guess, because that was our typical laser tag night. We're going out night. Yeah, but we just didn't you know, expect to see this at all, especially at two o'clock in the morning. And we should also mention the snow really started to pick up right about now. You guys really shouldn't have been out, to be fair. To be fair, you are correct. We should not have been out. <laughs> this is a very sketchy situation. Uh, I don't think anyone else knew we were doing this. It's not like our parents knew. So, right. you know, if if a car of four, you know, uh, late teens to early 20 dudes just went <laughs> yeah. missing, no one would know. You know, the legend yeah. of, of Turkin claimed another four, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But but so we dr we drive up, we we're on this ascent and we're looking around and <laughs> as we round this little left hand bend on the hill, there he is in the middle of the road. Oh God. Just standing menacingly. <laughs> menacingly. Is it weird that at this point I picture Vinny not wearing a shirt? <laughs> I'm like, I just feel like he's already like ripped his shirt off. He's, he's not like, ready to go. You want to go? Like, yeah, like these hands are rated E for everyone. You coming to get it or what? I don't think any of us were in the fighting mood at, at this point in time. But I, I can't speak for everyone in the car. But just You're in on the pants shitting mood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he's just standing in the road, and we're like, "What do we do? <laughs> like, <laughs> this, we don't have a plan. You know, we had a plan." For when he was on the side of us or behind us like right. just drive but when he's in the front of us we're like what do we do <laughs> so he sees us coming and he quick like darts over to the right side of the road and then as he gets there as if it wasn't weird enough that he was just standing in the middle of the road <laughs> he just stares at us he stares at us as we drive by and i can feel his eyes penetrating my soul and I was just like, <laughs> I now know what true fear feels like. Sure. It just, I could not believe the circumstance and, and series of events that were happening. So we get up to where we turned around the prior time. We turn around once more and we drive back down the hill and we don't see him again. Mm. And you think that that's where the story ends, but it doesn't because as we're driving down the hill, Chris hits a stick, <laughs> probably the size of a small tree branch. Again, sounds about right. And it gets wedged underneath oh. his Ford Focus. Oh, no. And he goes, is that, is that stick under the car? Is it <laughs> What's happening? Is it stuck? <laughs> <laughs> and we said, you hit it, buddy, and it is wedged underneath there. Like, we could just hear the stick dragging underneath. And... My first thought or my first sentence was, I'm not getting out to get that stick. And we all were like, yeah, no shot. It's you, Chris. It's your car. <laughs> you're, you're the one who's driving. You got to go outside, brave the elements and get this stick out from underneath your car. <laughs> to quote a story that I can't recall if we've touched on or not. This is the point where I would say, this is you. This is not me. I don't know, you know what I'm referring to. <laughs> I do. I do. And we have not gotten to the, that story yet, but we will get to yeah. it eventually. This is you. This is a you situation, not me. <laughs> yeah, right. We, Turkin could have put that stick there. We don't know that. It could have been a plan. It's like a rumble strip. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Spike strip situation. A backwoods rumble strip, if you will. Yeah. There you go. And the weird thing was, and Eric, you can also weigh in on this uh, if you remember 
I don't remember the stick being there on our first, second, or third passes, just on this fourth down pass. Yeah, right. I don't know. So the only thing that I could think of, it was either A, a trap by Turkin. Yep. B, <laughs> the winter storm knocked a branch loose and just fell nope. on the road, which is probably the most likely version. Nah. <laughs> Or C, <laughs> mm. or C, it was Turkin's ghost, and he levitated the stick underneath our car just as we were driving over it. Like, we didn't see it there as we were approaching it, and he just wedged it underneath there. Sure, jammed it in there. I prefer to believe it's a little bit of each point of the triangle. Um, that, that, it's a little of column A, a little of column B, a little of column C. If, uh, if I'm, it, you know, if you ask me. That is scary, though. I mean... And like I said, anything like that, that would freak the hell out of me <laughs> just to see anything. So, Chris, we, we, he got out of the car and he runs around to the back and he tries to, like, reach underneath to grab this stick. And the whole time we're in the car, we're like, Chris, he's coming. He's coming. <laughs> and I've never seen him run faster in my life than to get from the back of his car back in and he th like, I don't, I don't remember what he did with the stick, like if he left it in the road, but I just kind of remember him like picking it up and hurling it towards the side of the road, just like, whoosh, you know, just throwing it. <laughs> and he got back in the car and we gun it down the rest of the hill and we drive across the train tracks and we uh, we left for home. And if you think that that's the end of the story, there's still even more. Oh, God, <laughs> because on our way home. About five to no, maybe not five, maybe 10 minutes down the road. We're driving down like this major uh, route in, in our area. And we have to turn off onto a side street to go back home. But also that road is very steep uphill, like a, an uphill climb as well. So as we get to the top of that hill, evidently it was snowing way harder 10 minutes down the road <laughs> than it was snowing on Turkins Hill. But <laughs> Chris starts losing a little bit of traction and he's got the, oh, you know, he's sawing wood in the front of the car, if you will. Like his hands are <laughs> on the wheel and he's gripping and 10 and two and just, you know, <laughs> back driving, forth, back driving through the snow. And as we come up to, we are almost near the top of this hill. We could not have been closer to flatter ground than where we were. And the car just immediately goes off the tracks of tires that were in the snow. And we go almost car first, like nose first into a ditch <laughs> on the side of the road. <laughs> and we're like, are you kidding me? Like, thank God this happened here. Yeah, not on his road. Oof. Yeah, not that would have <laughs> been. Turkin's road. Hey, uh, Turkin, can you give us a push here? Like, we're, uh, we're hey, a little stuck. Can you hook the pulley up, please? So we end up getting out of the car and Eric and I are in the front of the car and Vinny was kind of like on the front side of the car because uh, he couldn't really get out because his car door like was over a ditch kind of. So <laughs> yeah. Eric and I got out and we pushed the car out back onto the road and we get back in and i said chris we might have to like do a uh, do a three-pointer and go down like back down the hill and get a running start up like i don't know if this is gonna work but that little ford focus chugged through like the little <laughs> engine that could right and we got to the top of the hill and we made it home and we lived to tell the tale Thing was digging deep yeah one thing one thing i want to mention that so the road does sound kind of the one that we were on his road it's kind of like a backwoods road, right? Mm -hmm. It there are not people that just normally drive on this. Like it's a very it's remote. Yeah, yeah. Like just roads every once in, or cars every once in a while, and yet <laughs> we went up and down this thing three times within a span of probably twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> turns a couple heads you know <laughs> so this guy well here's the other thing too this guy i think was probably somewhat accustomed to it just because of the lore behind his legend like chris like i said this was all of our first times me Vinny, and eric but when it came to Chris, he had already been there once. Like he had seen the legend for himself. And the whole time he was kind of prepping us like, oh, just you guys wait. 
just you wait like you know <laughs> y'all you gonna see him you don't think it's gonna happen and it he just sneaks right up on you and he gets you you know like that sort of deal right 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 um but yeah absolutely correct eric like this is a very remote road there are not that many cars that drive up and down and here we are just going up down up down and he's probably <laughs> just like putting on a show for us at this point which is why I would expect him, like why I, I didn't necessarily expect it, but why he was probably in the middle of the road on our second pass up. <laughs> yeah. Right. He's just like, I'm going to get these fuckers. Could hear right the here. car coming again. He's like, like, what's right. with the fucking disturbance <laughs> once and for all? Some divorced dad just trying to make dinner. I'm right. just out for my nightly jog, you know, <laughs> like quit it. Just, just leave me alone sort of deal. But interestingly enough, if you think that's the end of the story, you would be wrong. And I can't believe I can say that sentence this many times. Right. Because, and I took the screenshot on my phone and I'll have to see if I can find it here, like while I'm going over the story, but the next day, or maybe it wasn't the next day. Maybe it was like a day later or like two days later or something like that. I'm not sure. It's a day late and a dollar short, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But uh, Eric, he he comments on my Facebook wall and he said, I I got some news for you. Like, this is <laughs> this is interesting. Like, I need to, t you know, tell you something. I found it. Here it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this photo and I'm going to send it into the discord chat here. And Eric, right. do you even remember sending me this? Uh, now that you're talking about it, I do remember. So, yeah, I think the next day, the next morning or something, I had told my mom we did this. And, yeah, I think that's <laughs> I think that's where this is going. She kind of gave some more info on it, I believe. Yeah. So so without getting too far ahead of ourselves, this I just posted it in general chat. So oh, if, if, if you go back to general chat, you'll see this. Eric sent this on January 4th, 2010. I found the truth. <laughs> yeah. That's I great. found the truth about <laughs> Turkin. And I was just like, what the hell? Like, we need we need more information. It's like you're an investigative journalist. You and know? as you can see, this is from 11 years ago. Like, this is it, it's so crazy that this is from so long ago. Yeah. And it turns out that Eric has an inside horse knowledge about <laughs> this information. So, Eric, why don't you drop the bombshell on the podcast here today? Uh, I can't do that because I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. So I will drop. Oh, no. I will drop the proverbial bombshell on everybody for on behalf of eric this is eric's bomb he's just handed it to me he yes, uh yes thank he, you he just forgot the passcode i'm gonna hit the launch codes and we're launching it right here, here we go here we go the story behind turkin is not one of revenge mm. the story behind turkin is of one of pure mystery mm. and one that we will potentially never understand it turns out that Turkin is just some guy that lives on this road. I don't know if he has other people that live with him, like if he if he lives with his parents or if he lives with some kind of caretaker or whatever. But this is just some guy that has some type of mental illness, whether oh it be uh, some type of I, I don't I don't really know what the. Um, I guess the proper term would be like if it's a, a mental mental deficiency or some type of thing he was born with or if he suffered some sort of accident. I have no idea. We don't. You could take a shot. You're not disparaging the differently abled. No, but I just don't know what it is. So I don't want to paint a wrong picture. Mm, gotcha. So like I, we're all about the hard truth and the cold <laughs> hard facts on this podcast. Love it. So, you know, we don't know the actual legitimacy behind it, but it turns out the reason why Eric was able to know about this is because I don't know if it was your mom or your dad, but somebody knew the family behind Turkin. Huh. Th they didn't know Turkin himself, but they knew the family. 
And it turns out that they were just like, oh, yeah, he's just a guy and he just likes to run around outside in the middle of the night and <laughs> doing that. Yeah. This urban legend was born. Wow. Yeah, because people kept seeing him and didn't know what the deal was. I mean, exactly, I could see that. Yeah. Exactly. And people put things together like, oh, my God, he has binoculars. So he's looking out for these license plates, you know, right. on these cars for the guy that killed his daughter. And he and he did. Now, I should also mention this. He did not have it when we were there, but he absolutely did carry a baseball bat when he was out and about uh, up and down this road. Because the other time when Chris went with a few other friends, you know, uh, from a different friend circle that you know, outside of our friend group, mm -hmm. he was carrying a bat. And the way that Chris described it was he was twirling it between his legs as if he was like dribbling a basketball <laughs> between your legs. Like if you know them. <laughs> oh yeah. I know, you, you know exactly what you're talking I about. I remember him saying that. <laughs> yeah. So sure. He wasn't on acid. I don't know. I don't know. I, like I said, I don't want to speculate. You know, we're just working off of the information that we were able to discover over the course of these years and all these years later. But he, he like they they drove up to him and they actually talked with him. Like he, he stood on the side of the road and they rolled down the window and they were like, hey, Turkin, like, you know, are you are you doing OK? Like, what's going on? Oh. And he didn't say anything. And all of a sudden he just takes the bat and he just starts going and he just starts like. <laughs> twirling it in between his legs and then they were like whoa like, get the fuck out of here and they just drove away huh wow wow there's a guy around here that's kind of similar an urban legend or just uh no, just a guy i mean bill are you well, talking wait, about dragon oh yeah but he got caught up on a charge then well i know but i mean there's this guy, there's this guy that used to frequent a local coffee joint around here and this guy, he had, he carried like butter knives around with him. What? And like, he carried yeah, it was, this, this like, shit was bizarre. He man. carried this like chain around and he would like walk up to people and he'd be spinning this chain and he'd yell, Ghost Rider, fire breathe. And he'd like whip this chain at people. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy. Wow. Totally. There's a whole YouTube video. You can find it. I think it's, I forget what it is. It's called, it's Enter the Dragon. And you can watch it. This guy, like, he just like, yeah, dude, it's nuts. You gotta watch it. He drives his bike like off this like small ledge and just doesn't lift it up at all. So he just drives off and straight face plants into the ground. It, well, he just starts yelling and screaming about all kinds of stuff. It's wild. So he commuted yeah. by bike, or was this just the, like this day? Oh, okay, to be honest, okay. I'm t I still think he lived behind the coffee shop. Like he was just always there. He never really. He just like materialized like a specter. Like one minute you're just standing there with your friends and then you turn around. It's like, oh shit, dragon. And at, at this point, we were probably, I was probably 16, 17 years old, give or take. And nobody knew how old this kid was. <laughs> they knew just he had a mustache. It. The ageless wonder, I guess yeah. you could call him. Yeah, yeah. And, and he, yeah, he would just keep carry these knives around. And there was this, this group of kids that would film him all the time. There's a whole YouTube video yeah. of this guy just doing some just off the wall. I mean, there was one one time he he straight up had a whole conversation with us about how he took his car and he drove his car at 100 miles an hour, a car that he did not have, and clipped off the top of a light pole in a parking lot. Right. What? He said he jumped it so high he hit the top of a light pole in a wow. parking lot. And this was this tiny parking lot. He was like, yeah, man, I got this thing up to 100 miles an hour. So we were like, <laughs> what? That's pretty badass. Yeah, at the time it seemed yeah. that way. And so um, you realize, like, you were literally a millisecond away from getting skinned by a sh home right. sharpened butter knife. He was like the low budget evil Knievel of you know your ho not hometown, but like your your town that you lived in or whatever. <laughs> and he was like, now, so here's what I'm picturing when you say he careened over the top of this light pole, like he cleared it. I'm just picturing like in Grand Theft Auto. Like mm -hmm. somebody driving on the highway and like doing that thing where you could kind of like ride up the side of the concrete barrier and like go flying off. And yeah. he's just like flying over neighborhood houses and businesses and light poles. Exactly. And that's how a person that has a modicum of intelligence would imagine what happened. But there is nothing in this parking lot. Yeah. Like so nothing. <laughs> he, I wonder if in his mind, like if he was just on something like drugs or his own ethereal juices or whatever. I don't know. Probably there was definitely some trauma that I think something had happened. I mean, he clearly had some kind of issues, 
but then in in recent years um he got caught up on a charge for some kind of I, 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 yeah, the the de- the details are like shady because some people will tell you it's one thing and other people will tell you it's a completely different thing, and nobody really knows what it is. You just like, but you it was just, something sexual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, was some. It was okay. something. Yeah, but nobody really exactly knows. It's it right. just like one day he just disappeared, like nobody had seen him again, and then everyone's like, "Oh yeah, he he went to jail for so and so," and then I. I don't know if I told you this, Bill, mm-hmm. but I'm walking through the mall and <laughs> and sitting on those rocking chairs in front of Belk is Dragon. That's crazy. He's just sitting in a rocking chair, staring at that like CBD booth across, <laughs> like right next to Victoria's <laughs> Secret. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. I guess being you. all sus. What a camp out spot. <laughs> yeah, and they they have these like old ass white like Victorian era rocking chairs, and he's just sitting in there rocking, just staring at people in the mall. And I I was walking with my wife, and I was like, "Hey, that's Dragon. I know you're not from around here, but uh, boy, do I have a story to tell you." Hey, it's a thing. <laughs> do, you know what I, do you know what I'm picturing? I'm picturing like the old rocking chairs that you would sit outside of like a Cracker Barrel, where yeah, you exactly play that. checkers. It's exactly that. It's exactly that. It's 100 percent exactly what you're describing. So he's like waiting for somebody to either a play checkers with him or he's just kind of staking out this CBD Victoria's Secret corner of the mall. Yeah, yeah no, I, I 100 percent like he, he's uh, he's up to something like and, and we would go back because we, so, you know, how women are sometimes we end up going shopping basically every weekend and I'll just see him. Like he's just around again and he looks exactly the same as when he disappeared like 10 years ago. He hasn't <laughs> changed a bit. And it is just the ageless wonder. You he can't, is. Yeah, time yeah. can't stop him. He's he's just a being. I'm gonna be driven to madness by this mind altering like story that I can't get to the bottom of with him. Like I'd love to talk to him, but like he's just like gone. Like he just vanishes, and mm. then he's sitting on a rocking chair. And I just want to be like, where you been the last ten years? <laughs> Do you know what I picture? I picture uh, whenever you see him. Like going through your head, it's a similar phrasing to how Charlie says dragon in the family feud episode of yep. It's Always Sunny, where he's like, a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's what you say to summon him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like when somebody's like, okay, I, I gotta, you know, talk with this guy or see what's going on. A dragon. And yep. there he appears. Yeah, like just to put things in perspective, I just looked up just on the other monitor. The one video has like 150,000 views. Yeah, it's insane. Oh my God. It's like a thing. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like if you watch it, like you would you would get it. Like you just you're like, what what is happening here? Being there and like witnessing and like going through this, like it almost is one of those things where you think back to you know a decade ago and you're just like, did this actually happen or am I making this up? Yeah, and this shit actually happened. And and the crazy part is, is like you know how every town has that thing where there's like that one guy that's just that guy. And they're like, oh, don't worry about him. That's like horseback Jesus or whatever. Right. Well, that's, that's, that's <laughs> thing. Like, I'm oh, dra- like, hey, it's dragon. Like, I, d- I do feel bad for the guy because like, if he's just content living his life and he doesn't even like comprehend that he, his existence is on the internet or whatever. Right. I just feel bad that like these kids were just filming him and now yeah. putting like his, his struggle or plight on the internet. On blast. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I, thinking yeah. about it now i feel exactly like that because it's yeah. just like holy fuck like i probably didn't have the mental capacity to deal with that or process it at the time mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it was 12 years ago it's just uh, yeah, crazy yeah so uh, i would say over the course of the last decade and, and obviously this even falls outside of that decade realm people have just evolved as a society to be so much more aware of potential issues that like people would be exploiting against others. Mm. So like if this guy truly does have a mental illness, like it sucks that it's up on YouTube now, right. but back in the day it was a lot edgier and people would be like, Oh, like look at this crazy guy, like up on YouTube, you know, yeah. now people, instead of just seeing that on the surface, they're like, well, why is he crazy? Like, you know, what's going on? Like, is there, so it, it does suck that, you know, this is up there for, for people to see or whatever. Yeah, there is a little bit more innocence to it than you think, because originally what happened was, if I remember right, the, there were some guys that were, it started with some guys that were BMXing in a parking lot. They were just 
riding their bikes and they were filming each other and he came up and was like hey film me do this trick oh so, and then okay. he like he like inserted himself into the thing i'm gonna step away real quick and say goodbye to meg sorry all right yep. bongos <laughs> bongos <laughs> it was weird because he actively sought out that's why he would always come to the coffee shop because like bill bill and i were in bands and like after shows you'd go to the coffee shop or before a show everybody would meet up there was like these designated spots well he knew that and he would just like pop in and be like what's up and like <laughs> nobody yeah and the cool part was is like we nobody thought anything of it it was just like hey dragons here like i mean we were all had a little weirdness in us but like nobody really thought anything like different about dragon than anybody else thought about anybody else it was just like oh sweet dragons here and then like as the scene sort of disintegrated you know like bill's band ended my band ended and the, it, it transformed into whatever like everybody just sort of bifurcated and took their own paths well dragon vanished just like half the other people and then you know all the stuff comes out and resurfaced but dude we were like 15 16 years old you're not really thinking about stuff like that when you're young teenagers in a music scene I wonder, um, like you said, he carried multiple knives with him and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and chains. Like it was just butter knives. Like nothing he could ever really hurt anybody with. So he must have had like a backpack or like, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he would just carry around different stuff or whatever. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And he always wore a bike helmet, whether he was wearing riding a bike or not. He always had a bike helmet on and weird, like, like big, like Dewalt safety sunglasses. <laughs> Don't sponsored by Dewalt. <laughs> like, could you imagine if that was? So nowadays local viral marketing campaigns have become like a much bigger thing. What if DeWalt was ahead of the game and they were sponsoring Dragon? Dragon. I don't know. They they would have been ahead of the curve because that video has got view. And there's multiple too. It's not just one. I think what even is crazier is I like before we started the podcast today, I mentioned which episode we were recording, but I didn't say to you guys like we like days in advance, like Hey, we're going to be talking about this. Like you guys just happen to have another similar local legend story yeah. like this loaded up and ready to go without even knowing it. Like we didn't plan this. There's a guy in um, a nearby town where I grew up that it's nothing threatening or anything like that, but uh, we called him, <laughs> we called this guy neck boy. <laughs> what? Oh, the boy. way he would walk, he would just stand straight up, but like cock his neck back like three <laughs> inches from being like parallel with the rest of his body. So, and, so he uh, was always like, he had his nose turned up at people. Right. Yeah. So like we would always see him in town and we'd be like, oh, there's neck boy. Awesome. Strange. What a strange <laughs> neck take. Boy. Yeah. There was a guy in, I don't know, Bill, if you remember him, but the guy that he was like the bigger guy, old dude with, he was like bald and he would walk around with that giant wooden cross around his neck. See, I never, I heard about that, but I never saw it. Yeah. He hung out in front of the all the time. And like. I swear this guy was like Rain Man with car speeds because he could tell if you were going like one mile an hour too fast driving through <laughs> and you'd be like, I forget what we called him. We had, we called him Terry, but I forget there's something else that we called him, but he, he could tell if he was like speeding and he would like slam his newspaper down on the ground and like stand up and like essentially jump into the middle of the road to get you to slow down. The speed limit's 25 through there. If you run 25 and a half, he would be like, hey, I mean, you need to slow down, motherfucker. He would like right, lose, furious. Yeah, lose, like completely unglued, would just lose his mind. Was his nickname Speed Trap Terry? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be yeah, awesome if it was. I, I, think we called, I think it was Crazy Terry. I don't know. We called him something. But uh, I just remember everybody would be like, oh, that's Terry. And he was, as far as we know, there was nothing like wrong with him except for he he just didn't like speeders i guess he because you could go to the diner that he would stand in front of and like get your food and have a conversation with him on the corner and he was a completely normal guy but then would like like you'd flip a switch if you were in the middle of a conversation with him and somebody was speeding it would literally be like a jekyll and hyde moment where he'd like tear his shirt into ribbons and then like <laughs> run into the street and like try to bang on this guy's car like Nobody really understood what that was about. And I, I think a lot of people were just too afraid to ask him because they didn't want to get their head ripped off. Right. It, it almost reminds me. I don't know if any of you guys listen to it. I, I, it, I just found out about them recently, but they have a podcast now. They used to be on Australian radio. Their names are Hamish and Andy, and they're really funny Australian comedy duo. And uh, like I said, they, they have a podcast now, but they had a segment on their radio show and podcast for years 
where it was like these strange skills and they would have people write into the show and they would talk about like, oh yeah, I have this ridiculously cool or weird or strange skill, like where I could draw a line and tell you how long it is, like to Ooh. the millimeter or <laughs> he, I could That's, look at weird. like, yeah, like I could look at a line and tell you how long it is. There was one guy, he said, I could tell you someone's shoe size just by a glance, like if they <laughs> walked by me. Um, the best one was, and you could look this up on their YouTube channel. Uh, it's called Hamish and Andy. It's called water pour expert. What and it was this kid who he was at his job one day and somebody said like, um, I could, you know, how much water is in here or whatever. And somebody poured it into like from one cup into a glass or something. And he correctly said like it was a hundred milliliters of water or whatever. So That's they weird. brought this guy on the podcast and they had him blindfolded and they did a water pour test and he got it wrong three times for three and he <laughs> was way off, but he got closer as it went on. But it was just, well, it, it reminds me like speed trap Terry here as we've so called yep. him. Speed it. Trap remi Terry. <laughs> Love it it reminds it. me of like that weird and obscure skill that they would have on their, on their podcast. That is bizarre. So, speaking of weird and obscure skills, I, I've just recently set a world record. Oh. And I don't think anybody here is aware of it. Uh, but is this breaking news like on my podcast? It is. Uh, Holy no, shit. It has not been announced. What a time. But Guinness is coming to verify. Uh, they, it'll be about 12 weeks, unfortunately. But I set a world record. Are you serious? <laughs> I, I am serious. I set a world record oh, wow. for drinking a Capri Sun faster than anyone. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh my God. I'm not what? kidding. I'm not kidding. So there's a radio show that I listened to, and they just said that, oh, this, this guy set a world record for drinking a Capri Sun in so, such and such a time. And I was like, that's bullshit. I can beat that. Well, anyway, <laughs> it was a lot harder than I thought. But he did it in 10.56 seconds or something like that. 10 seconds. And because you have to start with the straw in the plastic attached to the Capri Sun, then you have to take the straw out, puncture the Capri Sun, and then oh, drink. That's why it's so hard. So it took me a whole box of Capri Suns. <laughs> but after my wife came home and thought I was having a stroke because I was sitting there just Shoveling Capri Suns. Press the mouth. sugar going through your veins is yeah. like insanity. It was, it was not great. You're hopped up on Capri Suns. <laughs> it was, but man, if you could have seen how fast I shot out of my seat when I slapped the, because I had one of those little hand cup timers. Yeah. I, was... yeah. <laughs> I knew you know. I had one of those. When I, when I hit it, and I was like, holy shit, that's six seconds. That's a world record. And, and it, I blew it away. I blew it away. And all these people called into the radio show the next day and they were like, dude, I did it in like 10.4. And I'm like, are you guys serious? I'm killing it. So I submitted it to Guinness and they sent me an email and they were like, in 12 weeks, we're having somebody come out to verify. <laughs> so they're going to give me that plaque and I'm going to wear that. I'll tape it to my shirt. I don't even give a shit. Oh my God. That is incredible. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I can't wait to see a video of that. I cannot wait. <laughs> Yeah, I, if they, I did it, uh, I think it was last week, and I, I submitted it, and they're going to send somebody out. They said 12 weeks, but wow. when it is, yeah, I'm going to put a video, and it's it's awesome. Dude, I am so happy for you. That is Dude, I, so I, awesome. That's outstanding. I've, <laughs> I've always wanted to be in the Guinness Book of World Records. What and an every, obscure thing, too. I know. Like, like, what, but the worst part was is he was like, yeah, this record didn't exist, and I just did it and then submitted it, and they were like, yep, that's a world record. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this guy's thunder from him <laughs> just right away. I now it, it it behooves me to where now I'm trying to think of different obscure records that nobody's ever done. We tried one in high school, but we never got the. You know, we kind of talked about it. We started it, and then the one guy was like, "I can't do this." We we're gonna <laughs> set the record for the longest, um, the longest Monopoly game. Oh God! Oh, how, what's the record? Or what was it? It was at the time. I thought it was not that crazy. It was like, you know, completely reasonable, like six, seven hours. Oh. So we had decided, like, what if, what if, you know, you could do it and keep it prolonged for like a day, like do a full twenty-four hour, you know, Monopoly game. I think we made it like four hours in, and the one guy's like, "I, I gotta go home. Like, I can't, <laughs> I can't do this." But I know, gotta go to work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it was just like you know, it was one of those things in high school. We talked about it, 
you know, we had many meetings about it and, you know, how can we accomplish this? Um, and then the idea was, you know, towards the end of it, you could, you know, we'd relocate, like we wouldn't have to be in one space, like, uh, to make this, you know, to put it in perspective. So we went away, the one kid's dad took us to ocean city for his birthday. And we took, they had like one of those eco line three fifty, you know, 15 passenger vans. And we took the, the monopoly board in the van on the trip. So we played like on the highway and the whole way down. Oh my God. And we carried the board into the hotel, the whole nine yards, but <laughs> it just never, it was just like, I can't do this. I'd be was, ready to kill myself. It, yeah. It was lasting the car ride down. And then you had to transition from car to hotel room. Yeah. Yeah. So basically like we were rolling in the lobby as somebody was checking us in. <laughs> the, I could imagine the hotel staff. Are they, are they playing Monopoly on the top right. of a suitcase? Like what the hell's Monopoly happening right now? I but, wanted to yeah. see him take a, like a flight to Australia. Mm-hmm. Go, through, go through security <laughs> with a Monopoly. Board. You can't bring that little gun in here, sir. <laughs> <laughs> sir, this is a top hat. Get off your high horse. <laughs> I thought it would be fun and I still think it would be a cool idea. But yeah, because yeah, that's got to be the old record. I wonder what the new record would be. Oh, I'm sure it's been shattered. There were there's some of the ones that I had tried and I was like, why would anybody do this? Was like most bars of soap stacked. Mm hmm. Like weird crap like that. But the guy had like, he bought these special bars of soap that were like as thin as a piece of paper. And he stacked like hundreds of them. And it's like, and they had to be wet. They couldn't be dry. So they were just slipping and sliding. And then some of them are really dumb. Some of the ones that I tried, like the guy, it was like most dice caught blindfolded or something. But it was just his partner throwing the dice into his hand. Huh. But it counted. But he did, he was like double fisting them, and he was like catching like a dice a second. And he, but all he did was hold his hands out, and his partner was really the one that was like tossing the dice right in his hand. I just don't even know what the strategy would be because you either have to have insane reaction time to close your hand and grasp the dice, or you have to have like a partner that's giving you like a heads up, like ah! you know, like just <laughs> nice when I do that or something like cue. that. <laughs> Yeah, and it's got to be. Could you imagine, like, it, like you said, if he's double fisting, like if he's catching in both hands, he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, some of them they look. They're a lot harder than people think. Like when I did the Capri Sun one, like it took me probably fifteen <laughs> I times. I can't believe it. To drink to get a Capri Sun in less than ten seconds because poking that sh- fucking straw through that tiny ass hole, dude, and you have to drink it through the straw. Like you can't, yeah. you can't do like anything that I was like, I tried stabbing the, just trying not to hit the hole, just stabbing the pouch and then flipping right. it upside down and squirting it in my mouth. But then the straws at the top and the liquid isn't, and you're not drinking it through the straw anymore. So what classifies a finished run? Is it like when you hear the, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Essentially like they kind of determine like if there's like, I don't know, like a tiny bit, I guess in the bottom, they're not going to care. Cause the guy had a little bit left in his and they gave him the thing. So, I, I mean, I'm going to be like, look, if you don't want me to beat it by six seconds, I can drink everything in this pouch. <laughs> you can <laughs> maneuver the straw seconds. around yeah, almost well, like an ant eater would be sucking up ants. Like, yeah. Like you know. you're kind of missing the point here. Like I beat it by six seconds. It's not like it's even close. That's insane. I, well, dude, much, much congratulations, you know, uh, good luck with the certification. Hopefully you'll have to, what you'll have to do is you'll have to post us, uh, like a post a picture when it happens and we'll share it on the social media for the podcast. Oh yeah. I'm going to get the video of it and pictures and it's going to be great. (laughs) Send me the video and that'll be like when this podcast goes live, this particular (laughs) one, that'll be the midweek post or like a day later. People just see you sucking down a Capri Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I can't wait. I'm going to put the plaque in my basement. It'll be such a great conversation starter. It absolutely (laughs) would be. By the way, have you seen my plaque? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you're a world record holder here. I'm a world record holder. Over Uh, here. That's just got to suck this liquid down. On a scale of (laughs) one to 10, one being not so bad, 10 being unbearable. How bad was your stomach ache after your initial (laughs) trial run of sucking down these Capri Suns? (laughs) The stomach ache wasn't that bad. It was the violence I did to my toilet. That was, that was, I don't know what it is, but Capri Sun is basically just human Drano. So, it, dude, I, I felt like, and I, I'm glad I have a bidet for this exact reason because it was a mess. Oh, like man. it was like you get in, like, so I, 
I tried them like one after the other. So by the time I finished the box, I probably had like, I don't know, 800 milliliters of Capri Sun. <laughs> <laughs> That's way too much. Like way that too much Capri so Sun. Much. Yeah. Yeah. I had like a pulsing headache in the back of my head. Uh, that yeah. felt like somebody was like clamping me with a wood vice oh, for, my God. for the longest time. <laughs> So wait, so here's the other important thing. What flavor of Capri Sun was your flavor of choice? Okay, so they only had two, and the one I didn't <laughs> want because it had it was something coconut related, I think. But Ew. I didn't it was like tropical breeze or something. I wanted they had I forget what the one we always drank when we were kids, whatever the red the, I don't know if it was strawberry or fruit punch. I think it was fruit punch. Uh but they didn't have that. Uh, uh and that's the one that's I really just wanted. bullshit. So instead a 29 year old's walking out of Martin's with like 800 <laughs> boxes of, of tropical Capri Sun. I would love like somebody to start up a conversation and be like, Oh, he must, must be a big Capri Sun fan. It's like, Nope, just trying to break a world record. And then yep. they'd be like, what the fuck is this record that he's trying to break? Yeah. And you, the, another cool part is, is like, I'll, I I told like some of my coworkers and they were like, what? That's it. Come on. I can do that. And then they tried. And they were like, holy shit, this is so much harder than I thought. Cause you start to panic when you put that like microscopic straw in and you accidentally right. put it too far and you pierce the back. And that's like, well, you're spraying Capri Sun out the back. Of the <laughs> <laughs> like oh you goodness. lose five seconds just trying to put that little straw in. Cause you're panicking. Well, and obviously it has a pointy oh. side, so it's easy to like pierce the hole. But a lot of times I remember, cause I haven't had a Capri Sun in years. Yeah, same. I can't tell you the last time I had one, honestly. I remember trying to shove this straw into this little tiny hole. And sometimes <laughs> I don't know if they have like a clear separating plastic pouch on the inside for the liquid, but sometimes I would get it jammed in between the liquid holding container area and yeah. the outside marketing on the package. Yep. So here I would go to like, I'm like, here we go. I'm going to start enjoying my Capri Sun. And I'm just sucking in like <laughs> processed air that's just been trapped behind marketing for weeks or months or whatever. That's awful. It's exactly right. Too. So like you take in a, a, a sip and you're just like, Phew! And it's yep. just like this disgusting air. <laughs> I actually have, I have the video on my phone i think i'm gonna send it in the discord oh hell yeah because this is the video of me breaking it um, <laughs> we're getting the scoop i love yeah. it this is what it's turned it, into it now. was something in my kitchen my wife counted me down and then so this is this one this was the preliminary one when I, oh when, there it is yeah oh look at that look at that technique the open oh Jesse, you're an animal. Dude, it was rough. You could see my shorts are not covered with the semen from the excitedness <laughs> that I had when I completed the task. That was from the 50 other Capri Suns that I failed trying to drink. So, like, when you squeeze the pouch like that, you don't have liquid come shooting out the sides of where the straw punctured? Like, it's all funneling into the straw? They, I may. I don't know. But the point is, they can't see it because my mouth is over that hole. Yeah. Okay. So you're catching the res, like the residual liquid that's coming out. Okay. Yep. I got you. Yeah, I got you. With just, the cup, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I, I, I refined. That was the preliminary video. I refined my double-handed twist technique thanks to uh, some videos that I watched on the hub, and I figured <laughs> out like the perfect like twist to squeeze ratio to get all of that out. <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> you said you got this video from the hub. Is this the Capri <laughs> hub? What is this? You the, know the hub. The hub. The P hub. Is this like a dedicated, it's it's just like, I think it's coming up in the strip club episode, but there was one thing where Eric just goes, oh, I know, I know where I'd be going or like, you know where I'd be going. And then I said right. like, I do, I do know. And he's like, yeah, you know. And I'm like, okay, I guess I know. You know. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, that was uh, that was one of the better runs. And then I got the more accurate timer that I finally found in a box I had from when the cup stacking was a big thing. <laughs> That's what when you said you were timing it, I'm like, you beat me to it. I was going to say you have this cup stacking mat that you use yep. to track your, your time. Absolutely. That's incredible. It's much more accurate because, you know, it just makes more sense. But I lose time on picking up the Capri Sun, but whatever. Hey, 
hey, I mean, it seems like you got the technique down pretty, you know, well pat here. And yeah, I mean, it's enough that I beat the world record. So I'm excited for Guinness to come and watch me suck down that Capri Sun real fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can assure you that our our panel of guests here and me and the audience, we're all rooting for you, buddy. We're, <laughs> I we're can't wait for you. You suck that little thing, man. Oh, yeah, dude, you, you know it. Well, uh, we're already over the hour mark. It just seems like it flies by. It's it's insane. So I won't be able to debut all of the new segments that I had for today's episode. However, I will debut the one that I'm most excited for uh, to close out the show. And this is a new segment. Um, I may try to come up with like a jingle or something before the episode launches, but the segment is called in all caps. What is it called? Or <laughs> what is this called? It's something like that. Awesome. And uh, sounds the, good. Yeah. The, pretty much the premise is that I'm going to show you gentlemen here today and the people on social media, a picture of an object or a thing, or an activity, or just something, and you are all going to tell me what it's called, and we're going to see how wildly different the terms or the names for things are, depending on where you are in the country, where you grew up, you know, different environmental factors, whatever. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, this first one, I would say is pretty much a, it's a layup. I wouldn't say it's, um, I wouldn't say it's too difficult, but at the same time, I guarantee you, between the four of us here today, we are, there's going to be a difference. We're going to have this called differently. So what we'll do is we'll start off with Eric uh, first, then we'll go to Billy, then we'll go to Jesse, and then we'll go to myself. And we'll each say this one at a time so as not to influence each other and just all like be shouting terms at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> we must have a little bit of order. So, uh, so peer your eyes onto general chat and, uh, tell me, uh, what is this called? Eric, you're up first. Uh, that's, uh, like an ice pop. Okay. Uh, Bill, what is, what is that called? Ice pop. Uh, Jesse, what is this called? Yep. That's ice pop. Ice. Oh my, all three of you. What the hell? This new segment's flopping harder. Than so what do you call it? <laughs> you call it a okay. freeze pop, don't you? I call it a freeze pop yep. or a freezy uh, pop or a freezer my, my pop. My dad called it a freeze pop, and I was like, the hell are you talking about? What do you want about? I'm like, where are you from? So, yeah, so the brand of of freezer pop that I always used to get was called Flavor Ice or yep. Flava All Ice. one word. Yeah, and it would come in a blue box, and they would be in some kind of, like, fishnet mesh material. And you'd have to cut into them and you'd put them in your freezer. And, you know, when you eat them, they pop. So, you know, freezer pop like it pops when it's just like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, good flavors right here. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so the other now what I also figured that I would do is um, if you actually look up on Google for a lot of these terms, you can see what they're called. Like they have different terms depending on where you are around the world. Sure. Sugar lightsaber. So when you Googled this, uh, I used ice pop because that seemed to be the, the, you know, the majority term for this. So I would say I'm in the, the minority here. Uh, but when you go to ice pop Googling it, it actually comes up as like a popsicle on a stick. Mm. So at the bottom of it, though, it says... Uh, well, so here, I'll read you the definition of ice pop. It says an ice pop is a water or milk based frozen snack on a stick. Milk. <laughs> I know milk. that. Yeah, that got me, too. I'm glad I'm glad that <laughs> didn't go unnoticed. The hell? Oh, Ralph all over my bike. That's disgusting. Uh, and then it says, unlike ice cream or sorbet, which are whipped while freezing to prevent ice crystal formation, an ice pop is quintessentially frozen or quick. Qu wait, qu quiescently. I don't even know what that word is quintessential uh, no it's q u i e s c e n t l y quiescently i didn't even follow that huh anyway uh <laughs> it's frozen while it's at rest and it becomes a solid block of ice the stick is used as a handle to hold it without the stick the frozen product is known as something else e.g a freezy and a freezy has a clickable link which takes you to the correct wikipedia page that we'd be looking for so in the United States, oh God. they have multiple terms, but the top term is freeze pop. 
Oh, that's just... uh, in Canada is where it's called. It's uh, it's called a freezy. And, but in the U.S., it's also. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. Uh, in the United States, it's known as a freeze pop. In Australia, it's known as super duper <laughs> juice pop, freezer pop, otter pop, ice pole. Otter pop, pop. Ice pole. <laughs> and icy pole. Those are the terms in Australia. I'm gonna start calling it an icy pole. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And then in in the UK, it's known as an ice pop, a popsicle, a tip top, or a lolly. A tip top. What's oh, lolly. Boy, I'm gonna give you a little tip top, like. In Peru, it's known as a mars marciano or a <laughs> marciano, marciano or something like that. Or a chups, which that one is interesting. A I don't know. <laughs> um, in the Cayman Islands, it's known as a chihiro. Oh, oh chihiro. Or a chihiro. Uh, in the Philippines or Japan, it's called ice candy. Mm. In Brazil, see that actually makes sense. I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher this. In Brazil, it's chup chup, <laughs> sacole, geladino, <laughs> gelino, or <laughs> din dim. <laughs> That's wild. Or in uh, Malaysia, it's ice batu. Uh, but yeah, I think I gotta hand it for the Aussies on that one with freeze pole, <laughs> ice pole, pole and icy pole. <laughs> so, but yeah, so uh, that's that's just like a preview. Super duper. Yeah, you said that too. <laughs> yeah, super duper. <laughs> that was the first one too. I would expect that to be last. Oh, you know, I'm just down under. I'm having a zupa dupa on the Water Bobby sticks. today. <laughs> They probably have a ton of them because they they basically live with those. That's the only way they can live down there is having a box of those in your freezer. <laughs> exactly, it gets so hot during the summer. But yeah, so that that'll be a, that'll be a new segment of the podcast. I have a list of probably twenty or so items right now. That's a cool idea. And you don't want to do another because this is going to be fun. Yeah. So, uh, it, oh, do you want me? I could do yeah, another, another right one now. in there. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. We're already over time, but so what? Who cares? Oh. I mean, it's your show, whatever you want. My bladder. Yeah, that's true. Your bladder. Well, you can say bongos and go <laughs> no, pee. No, it's okay. I'm down for the count. And we're posting the picture now. So same order. We'll go Eric, Billy, and Jesse. So I posted a picture of something. Eric, what is this called? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that's like uh, a semi-truck, I guess. That's All what right. I would call it. And Billy, what is this called? Tractor trailer. And Jesse... What is this called? Yeah, I interchange them, but I typically call it a tractor trailer. And I have the final say, <laughs> which I would call it a tractor trailer. So wow. <laughs> we have another three to one split on the podcast today, which I did not expect. Um, now, it is interesting because when you search something on Google like this, it, the term that Eric came up with is actually the title that's on the wiki. So once again, kind of like how I called it a freeze pop, and that's how they referred to, uh, referred to it in the United States version of the frozen delicacy. Um, wow, I just called the freezer pop a frozen <laughs> delicacy. <laughs> Giving too much credit. The wiki does call it a semi-tractor trailer truck, so it's like a combination oh, of gee. all of us. Oh, that's interesting. I was really hoping one of you was going to say Autobots or Optimus Prime, <laughs> but oh, <that's> a, yeah, <laughs> uh, nobody did. Um, but it says here that it is variously known as a transport truck, semi-trailer truck, tractor-trailer truck, semi-tractor truck, semi-truck, Trailer truck, tractor truck, transfer truck. Sounds like you're having a stroke truck. right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's known as simply an Arctic. Oh. Mm, I, I, no truck, just Arctic. Uh, single truck, semi tractor trailer, semi trailer, tractor trailer, semi trailer, semi trailer, big <laughs> tractor, big rig, 18 wheeler, <laughs> and it rapid now? An articulated <laughs> it's an <auction>. lorry. <laughs> yeah, I've heard actually, so it's, uh, to tie this back in, uh, Joey Balfour was talking about it on stream one day, and they were. I said, eventually, I said, "What the fuck is a lorry?" Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> and he UK. Said, oh, yeah. You know, mate, it's like it's like a lorry. And I was like, "No, no, I don't know." <laughs> it's a truck. Yeah, so I looked it up, and that's that's yeah, it's a lorry. A good way to spice this up was you should post pictures of stuff like this, and then say wrong answers only. Yeah, well, yeah, that's true. Uh, I would expect like, oh yeah, that will be a good compendium to the podcast. Like, I can actually post this picture before uh, like it goes live on social media just randomly like somebody's just gonna see me post a picture of this truck and i'll just be like wrong answers only and then i'll compile <laughs> it in a poll and see what people say 
And then, you know, we'll just we'll take our right answers and laud them over their wrong answers. That's what we'll do. Yep, absolutely. Because 100 percent, I would have said Autobot. Autobots roll out. Let's roll. Wow. Well, that was, in my opinion, a fantastic episode of the podcast. So I guess what we'll do is we will uh, we will end it there. Um, let me see. I need to think quick on my feet here. Quickly, quickly. Okay, pick um pick an exhibit at an aquarium. Jellyfish, the dolphins, stingray. All right, so thank you everyone for listening to this episode of Save It for the Cast. Uh this was a doozy of an episode. It was really really fantastic and I'd like to thank you all for appearing on the show. We've got Jesse making his first appearance. Uh, I want to thank you, Jesse, um, standing over by the jellyfish tank. My pleasure. Uh, and then uh, thank you, Eric, for uh, sharing your insights to the Turkin story. And we got you chilling way over by the dolphin tank. Hey, thanks. And Billy, once again, thank you for appearing on the show. And we've got you over by the uh, petting tank where you're next to some stingrays, if I'm not mistaken. Rest in peace, Steve Irwin. Have a great week. Be kind to one another. <laughs> and uh, I was actually cleaning like one of the penguin tanks and I fell in and drowned. OK, so uh, <laughs> that's it for this episode of Save It for the Cast. Remember to follow us all on the social medias for the show. It is Save It Cast is the uterine uter name. Uh, wow, we have u- uterus names now for the podcast. Uh, the username for the podcast. Um, but you can also just search Save It for the Cast. Uh, the hub website, I've actually made a super easy link. You can just go to bit.ly uh, slash save it cast, which is B-I-T dot L-Y slash save it cast. And that'll take you to the main website page for the actual show. All the social medias will be linked from there. And uh, yeah, this has been a doozy of an episode and we'll catch you all on the next one. Later. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.